today we have the pleasure to have with us a special personality. A special personality that is part of the showbiz of Cyprus and Greece that has an extended value added into the world of media and journalism, which unlike what he does, we will have the opportunity to discuss among others, defense, security in Cyprus, around Cyprus, Greece and the periphery. Today, I have the pleasure to be talking with Mr. Tassos Trifonos, who is a media expert, a journalist. My name is Dr. Mario Seftimiopoulos, and this is Prime Analysis. Dear Mr. Trifonos, thank you very much for coming at another web series of Strategy International. Thank you, dear Marius. Call me Tassos. Thank you very much, Tassos. Um, I'm looking forward to this discussion because it's not an ordinary discussion. Uh, I, I suppose it's a su- surprise for your viewers. Exactly. But that's the, the, the beauty about it because I know that you have, uh, you have done a great deal of work throughout your experience as a showbiz um, expert in different formats, if you want, along along the, the lines of your professional life, which we'll have the opportunity to talk. Mostly media. Mostly media. Yes. <laughs> but but at the sense, at this at this very important sense of, of, of our viewers and trying to understand, you also have another point of discussion that we're going to have to discuss today, which is about defense. Yes, it's... Um It's a thing that um, I'm dealing with uh, since I was um, in the high school. I always uh, I used to buy the magazines about defense, Greek magazines, and I al- always had uh, great interest about uh, defense, uh, about Greece, Turkey, the Balkans, Cyprus, of course, and it's uh, an aspect that uh, I like to. Uh, watch very closely. So it's very interesting because I'm going to start first of all with your uh, with your life, if you want, and also the the extent of your professional life. So before we go to the actual defense issues, allow me to go back a few years. Let's mm-hmm. talk about Tassos, the young person, the young and the restless, the, the younger, <laughs> the restless, the person who wants to do. Uh, who has a vision about himself. So how was the vision? Where do you see yourself going at the age, let's say, 18 onwards? I always uh, had uh, the vision of working in media, television, radio, uh, magazines. Uh, I was the kind of kid that uh, I like to be informed about everything, showbiz, cinema, music, and UK hits, USA hits, uh, Greek music, everything, everything. And uh, I was uh, reading everything in daily basis. Uh, Greek newspaper, Cypriot newspaper, uh, TV magazines, music magazines, defense magazines. Uh, I always like to be informed about uh, almost everything. And um, it was something that my teachers noticed. Mm-hmm. And uh, they used to call me in Greek uh, encyclopedikos, mm-hmm. uh, encyclopedia, encyclopedia kid. kid yes, yes, something like that. And all my classmates and uh, teachers, uh, they knew that I was going to um, study about media and uh, to work in the future in media. And voila. And it's very interesting because as I follow our discussion so far, I, I got to say to our audience that the, na- the natural aspect of you talking on the microphone is really impressive in a sense that I'm, I'm pretty sure that people are going to be amazed from the point of encyclopediatric, if you want, um, information that will come along in the, in the elements of international relations and defense. But allow me to say the following. Is it important for a young person to have a diverse knowledge of things we call it multi multi-dimensional these days but is it is it important to have diverse knowledge general knowledge if you if i may say for me point? yes and especially for a kid that uh, had a vision of uh, working as a journalist in media because to be a journalist it's uh, a vast thing yes uh, you have to have uh, a, a variety of uh, knowledge and uh, 
sadly, I see that the new generation um, doesn't have this va- variety. Yeah. They are more focused in uh, categories or um, interest, and uh, I think this is wrong. I remember myself watch the uh, news at 8.30, Mm-hmm. All the news from the mm-hmm. beginning mm-hmm. to the end. As I said, uh, reading a Greek and a Cypriot newspaper every day. So after many years, in 2019, when I started hosting a um, popular international format uh, quiz show as The Weakest Link, it was a great satisfaction when the um, people from the network in Greece, in the TV channel in Greece, Sky, they were telling me we are very, we are so satisfied that we have a presenter from another country that we feel that uh, knows everything about um, yes. Greek uh, history, society, political scene, not from, to, not only today, but uh, in the decades, in the decades in the past. Uh, that was because I was reading uh, since um, mid 80s, uh, Greek newspapers and watching uh, Greek uh, current affairs and everything, the same time with uh, Cyprus. So yes, for me a journalist and some and a person that want to uh, work in media um, is obliged to try to have this variety of interest and knowledge. And I think it's very important because myself as an academic or as heading a, th- a think tank such as Strategy International, it's really important to hear out from people that are in the media, as you said, the environment of the media, that are influential, if you want, through radio or TV with their actions. And it's very important to showcase that they have the knowledge, not only of the basics, but also the, the, the depth of mm-hmm. the knowledge. And as you said, knowledge is gained throughout years of reading, uh, assisting, uh, being associated with, and so on and so forth. But I, because what you said, I have tons of questions that I want to go okay. through. Uh, allow me to go a few years back, if you <laughs> want. I, I still am at the young person's life. So when is the first contact with journalism, let me say? Uh, it's difficult to say because um, whenever I remember myself, uh, it was the thing I wanted to do. You mean later, more... Uh, yeah, 18 onwards, you were still reading, but at which point do you go into journalism? You decide that this is for me because, you know, I, I know how free person you are and I know yes. the comments that you make and the critics, which I, I do as- I associate with those. And I, I can say to the audience that I listen to you on radio almost every day, but the, the most important thing is, you know, in order to be so uh, fluent, if you want, in front of a microphone, you need to be solid. And yes. allow me to use the word solid, solid as yes. a personality, solid as a, as a person, uh, as, you know, for the things that you say, for the mistakes that you possibly may do, because it's usually a live show. Um, so in the live show, you can make mistakes. But the, the idea is that, you know, journalism has, as you said, proportional elements that mm-hmm. comes with. But at which point do you say, well, OK, this is where I want to go. I want to go to the world of the media. And probably then you say, I want to go to the world of the showbiz. 1990, I was in uh, uh, the second grade of the, now we say the fifth grade of uh, high school. Um, and we had the week, a week that uh, we choose where to work um, to see how, how is the life in this the environment, pro- the work yes, environment. and the environment. And I chose to work at the CYBC, Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation, mm-hmm. RIC, as we say, in Cyprus. And um, then I was sure that uh, this is what I wanted to do. So um, it was in the beginning of the media industry boom in Greece, and uh, they created the media the media branch of uh, studies in Pandion University in Athens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I wanted to to go into journalism. to give my exams for uh, Pandion for media, and uh, I succeeded uh, to this. And the rest is history. But a, a lot of times we say that university is a starting point, but then your personality gets mature if you yes, want throughout please. throughout the experiences. How were your experiences? You said you're 20 years in Greece. How was your experience in Greece as a graduate, as a fresh graduate, let's say, of Pantheon? First of all, I started to work um, almost immediately. Mm-hmm. 
and I worked 360. I mean, I worked in magazines, in newspapers, in um, television, on television, uh, and finally on the radio. Everything was happening magical, fast, yeah, fast yeah. and magical. But uh, you, you show you show passion. I mean, even now that you speak, you show passionate about it. Yes, it's. Um, I'm a fan of the. Uh, code stay foolish stay hungry from uh, <laughs> of course one of the greatest uh, entrepreneurs uh, of Apple uh, Steve Jobs I think this is um, a very crucial thing for someone in every aspect and in every profession to stay foolish and stay hungry and stay uh, passionate about uh, what you are doing so um, everything was coming to me or I was creating the path I don't know it was like uh, another quote from uh, Paolo Coelho when, when you want something very badly very much the universe is bringing yes. to you so I believe I was lucky and uh, I was uh, in the right time the the right place the right time I, I know that we, we said that we want to cover as many things as possible, but I, I'm intrigued to ask. Yes, what? I want you to make a critic. Yes. With regards to whether discussions of political value do actually offer the sense of people's understanding and belonging. The, you know, the media is a bridge between political affairs and communication with the outside world. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing, all of you, in terms of journalism, if you want in general, is, uh, is, a, is a social, if you want, collaboration where we bridge uh, people together. In, in, in reflection to, to discussions of seriousness with regards to politics, political affairs, and international affairs, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to start engaging if you want more into in the field that we want to go, but do you think that they're reaching out to the people's needs considering the, the fact that we live in a volatile environment? Unfortunately, uh, nowadays, um, this thing is weak and it, it's uh, very weak, it's not very influential. I remember the times in the 80s and 90s that uh, a current affairs show was uh, very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only for the TV channel, mm -hmm. I mean, for society. And the other mm -hmm. day they were discussing what they heard uh, on the show. People uh, wanted to get informed from these shows or even in the uh, serious and uh, prestigious newspapers. You read, um, you read a column, an article about uh, the political and the current affairs, and uh, it had a, a value and uh, an influence. Nowadays, because of the social media, it's much more uh, light. Is it because people have the opportunity to organize their own web series, yes. podcasts, and on demand, on and, demand. Every, and everything. And um, Is it because suddenly there's an abundance of choices, so suddenly we hear a lot of different voices? Or is it because we, we complete, if you want, a proportion of, you know, this is at the end of an era, this, then there is another era and it goes on and on. First of all, I think people, they are, um, they are fed up with uh, politics um, because of the financial crisis and... Uh, and, and I think it shows in every election. I mean, yes. the younger people are less and less uh, voting, and I yes. think this is a problem also. But this is not the solution. And yes. they, are, they tend to, uh, to get into the temptation to believe, to read, and hear more uh, populist uh, views. Mm -hmm. And we have... Something that is popular and therefore populist at the same time. Because populist nowadays is also popular. Popular in the sense that a lot of people see it on TikTok, for example, or on Instagram, or no. stories and no, so on. No, populist, I mean, the, what we say in Greek, uh, laikistiko. I mean, mm. someone yeah, it's that the same, it's, the same, the same that maybe is not true, but they, mm. they know that they will, they will intrigue mm. uh, and temptate uh, people and the audience to believe it mm -hmm. or to react to this uh, news or uh, article. Um, and they don't they don't go deep. We, yeah. They stay in the surface. That's, that's a reality. And, um, but it seems also older generation does this 
nowadays. Y- yes. We want we want quick answers, quick solutions, mm-hmm. then go to the next subject, I think. And at, at times, I mean, but that's my personal opinion. And I think this is the um, mainly quality characteristic of the newspapers mm-hmm. that they can still offer the depth the depth, depth of, an analysis. of an analysis in their uh, articles mm-hmm. uh, but we have the other thing the other problem of the lack of time we have all these gadgets and technology that make our life uh, easier and more but more complex Yes, but now we don't have the time to yes. read an article in a newspaper, in a serious newspaper, to enlighten us uh, about uh, why uh, the things are like that mm-hmm. today in our country or in another countries or in Europe or in economy. So everything is uh, fast and furious. And then you see your, your iPhone and it says, you spend this amount yes. of hours and time on your phone and you yes. wonder like, Oh my God, how many hours did I spend on in front of my I phone? I believe after I watched um, the famous d- uh, documentary on Netflix, I mean, the social... Uh, ah, the social experiment. Experiment, mm-hmm. yes. I, I always believed it, but after I saw the documentary that without social media, Donald Trump... Uh, Donald not won. No. Yeah, probably. That, that's what I said, the, popular populist. Yes. Which means he, they make videos which are weird... I may say, in, in what sense weird. It's something that is not traditional. So it's not a traditional discussion. It's not a traditional interview. So they go, they make themselves known in the media as long as they are media. Like positive, negative, it's publicity. And also and, Brexit. Yeah, well, wouldn't, Bre- wouldn't Brexit, have, Brexit is a bit different. Happened. But again, the the person who represented the idea of Brexit and the way that he represented himself was a, dam- a momentum, if you mm-hmm. want, for Britain that you know has a problem. And right? also, I see that we are in... Um, an era that we can call a politic. Yeah. We don't see the um, important figures, uh, the great uh, politicians yeah. in Europe, in mm-hmm. US. Can you believe it that US 350 million people they will have for candidates Donald Trump and Joe Biden? Yeah. It's unbelievable. And even in our countries we see that um, the politicians they don't have the caliber that to, the to face these ex generation yeah. the ex yeah. generation of politicians had if you see the cyprus parliament now mm-hmm. and the members of the cyprus parliament now of, of the greek parliament it's not the same caliber as mm-hmm. it was 80s 90s mm-hmm. um, the thing is getting all the time lighter so there, there's and a lighter. lack of vision there's like probably a vision lighter in, yeah. and media everything lighter is about Um, I mean, elections is about media also. I mean, I always believed that. Yes, yes. Uh, we had the the era that the politicians didn't believe they, they didn't care about their uh, public profile. Yes, about their uh, um, profile. And now they're all on TikTok and Instagram, and they spend more time than yes, they spend on now TV and they radio. They care. They care almost only about their uh, profile and their. Uh, How do you say the um, their public profile, their picture, the the picture how they look on the yes, on the media and itself. less we don't have substance. Yes, it's only uh, uh, our profile in the mm-hmm. media, and I think people will realize that in the future that we will need substance again in politics, and especially. And I'm going now. If you want, I, I know that we we went into your lifeline, but. Assuming mm-hmm. that you started journalism, you probably probably handled indirectly if you want political affairs. But now I'm going into the international affairs mm-hmm. in Cyprus and around Cyprus, considering the discussion that we opened. Mm-hmm. So considering what we have today, the quality mm-hmm. of the political affairs, the politicians, visionaries or lack of visionary people mm-hmm. uh, or leaders in that matter, and the lack of, um, if you want... Um, Uh, the trust of people to vote for for others that can lead in possible solutions such as the Cyprus issue. How do you consider, as an individual, as a citizen of this country, how do you consider the the the, the current case of an unresolved case such as the Cyprus uh, unlawful division of an invasion of the single most you know country that is 
unlawfully divided with a status quo that that is what it is basically and there's no solution but then again we we see other places and we're trying to avoid other wars mm -hmm. and try to find a breakout breakaway if you want from wars and find a solution when we cannot find a solution to the cyber situation yes well i don't like the current status quo and i think uh, every cypriot uh, had to um, keep worrying about this status quo because it's a very insecure position in a, in an insecure world. Mm -hmm. We have Turkey, which is a um, regional superpower. And uh, if we don't see that, uh, we are stupid because um, we see that uh, Turkey is a worldwide player in uh, diplomacy. Uh, 80 million, they will be 100 million. Of course, we are a member of EU, that it's, uh, I think, the most important achievement of our uh, diplomacy mm -hmm. the last decades or after uh, our independence. But um, if I was a parent, I would be very insecure and uh, worrying about the future of my children in this country because um, we need a, a solution and something permanent. This is very, for me, it's a uh, it's dangerous status quo and uh, nobody guarantee that uh, will, uh, you know, will be peaceful, the things will be peaceful uh, in the future. And also we are in a very dangerous, dangerous neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, is, is it dangerous or is it more, I mean, because of the status quo, this is at least a proportionate stability out of instability. Yes, you can say that. But that. I know that you say it's volatile. I'm sorry I'm stopping you, but I know that it's volatile. But is it maybe a solution? When I interviewed um, the late uh, Greek Prime Minister Konstantinos Mitsotakis, he told me that uh, he was very worried about the status quo because the time is passing. We are now right. 50 years after the invasion. The occupation is... Uh, it's ongoing. It's still Yes, there. it's becoming like uh, cement now. You, uh, things are not changing. Uh, settlers are coming. Uh, generations are uh, changing and they don't know how to live with the others with the Greek Cypriots and uh, with the Turkish Cypriots, the Greek Cypriots. Anyway, so if we go to a solution of two separate uh, uh, states, that is the, uh, Tur the Turkish uh, goal, then we will have uh, a country in our island with uh, cheaper uh, work labor, with cheaper um, hotels, yeah. Yeah. cheaper tourist in, uh, destination, and it will be um, a very uh, awkward moment for no. Them. It will be a, a competitor mm -hmm. of the Cypriot uh, um, Republic, and then slowly, slowly, we will uh, be uh, in a very difficult situation um, financially again. The population will be less finally in uh, in the free part of Cyprus and uh, in the occupied, occupied part it will be it will increase generally it's not a safe uh, situation and a safe status quo and uh, I'm worrying when I hear uh, Cypriots saying uh, let's stay as we are it's okay mm -hmm. we prefer to stay no, I mean, as we are the status quo is no solution uh, that's obvious but uh, I mean one would consider that joining the European Union would actually add pressure to Turkey to sit on a table of negotiations. And it seems that, you know, different governments over the years of Cyprus Republic were demanding for a negotiator or negotiations of intensive negotiations. Yes, but you EU. see and we see that Turkey now is not uh, intrigued. But they're not intrigued because yes. they leave it on time. So as you said, when Foreign Prime Minister Mitsotakis Kostadinos uh, Mitsotakis said that they are cementing. They were cementing on time because they won the percentage of the land that they wanted unlawfully, but then they did, so they would leave it to a no solution status. A no solution status for them is a solution. Yes. But for us, it's is, not. Is not because we want the lands back. So, how do you bring the lands back is the main question. How do you bring the people back? 
assuming that the Turkish Cypriots also want to be in the Republic of Cyprus, which they have their own choices within the part of the Republic of Cyprus. But, but you said something very important. As I realized, the foreign policy of Turkey the last five, six, eight years is not about uh, being EU member anymore. They, they look that they don't care so much anymore. That's why they play the card of the mm-hmm. regional superpower. They don't show the intention to give things uh, in order to uh, get an, an EU member uh, uh, status. So this is concerning for me that uh, Turkey is uh, is getting away from EU. Mm-hmm. So you think, you think, I mean, all of these billions of euros that they get for migration or European Commission status, Th- this is just only a game for Turkey to just keep the Europeans busy? But they take the money anyway because mm. of their neighborhood uh, policy, geographical uh, neighborhood policy. position. Yeah, neighborhood policy. Okay, so assuming assuming on on what you said, let's go on defense. Yes, and okay. I know this is your your your, your hobby. It's my hobby. Yeah. Your hobby, and uh-huh. again, something that people may not know that you have this extensive uh, level of knowledge. How would you consider the strategic relation of Cyprus? vis-a-vis Greece mm-hmm. and vis-a-vis the European Union to start with. Meaning, how do you envision on a defense level mm-hmm. Cyprus as an integrative part of the European Union, knowing the status quo that we are at this point, so there's no solution yet, which means we have to do something for our defense. Yes. And we don't do things, or okay. many things for defense. Okay. Um, well, I I think that we have to do something radical okay. or something that looks radical. First of all, um, I don't know the way or I could, we can imagine the way. Um, Multiple scenarios exist. Yes. I would, uh, if I was a decision maker, mm-hmm. um, I would uh, give the budget, the money to Greece, for example, for uh, uh, extra submarines to cover Cyprus. Or I could buy two submarines mm-hmm. to, from France, for mm-hmm. example, like, uh, let's say, Scorpion cla- class submarines. You can explain what Scorpion class submarine is. <laughs> I, I, because I know that you know that. Just, <laughs> just explain it to, to our audience. Uh, well, it's one of the most um, advanced, technological advanced submarines uh, in the world. They are manufacturing in France. So I'm saying France because we know that we uh, we can buy mm-hmm. weapons from France. And France was uh, traditionally a country that we uh, bought. Uh, and there is a uh, traditional friendship yes. between v- Cyprus and VAP, France. Yeah, VAP vehicles and uh, uh, AMI, uh, AMX-30 tanks and uh, Exocet uh, missiles. Anyway, uh, I could buy, uh, as a Cyprus Republic, two Scorpion submarines to have them in Greece or in Crete and to cover Cyprus. Why not in Cyprus? In order not to provoke. Who? Um, the one who invaded already? Yes, but you know how to, how they use it in... Uh, but you in said di- radical. In, di- in diplomacy. You yes. Said, well, this is radical, radical. radical is also means... The approach of my national security is my national security. Yes, but uh, when you don't have depth, mm-hmm. we don't have depth. You can explain uh, depth. 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 Yeah. You can explain that um, uh, better than me. Strategy, oh. strategic depth. Yes. And based on strategic depth, infrastructure and infrastructure gives you portion, portion which is also the submarines. Yes, and okay. I wouldn't risk one billion submarines <laughs> to be in Cyprus permanently. I would okay. have them in Crete and to be in Cyprus if it was needed. Also, I would give money to to Greece and to the Greek Hellenic uh, Air Force to buy uh, tankers in order to cover Cyprus uh, better uh, with the Air Force. We could uh, pay for uh, F-16, mm-hmm. Block 30, the oldest mm-hmm. uh, uh, F-16, the first. Uh, and they will, be, they will be in which air base? in Greece, and they can use the Andreas Papandreou base in Paphos. Right. 
I also can um, have more strategic relationship with France that they want to use uh, Zigi, Marie Naval Base or Andreas Papandreou Base. Um, and so there is a base for the submarine. I, I don't know if they have the, te- the technical... Uh, or they can build infrastructure. Yes, they can build. But if we leave the radical things outside, mm-hmm. you have Israel okay. to buy cheap and uh, many uh, drones and UAV. Mm-hmm. We, say, we see now that the, uh, the modern... Uh, Army, uh, uh, yes. armies require and drones. the modern battles uh, mm-hmm. and everything uh, like in Ukraine they use a lot of uh, drones and UAV mm-hmm. and Israel is one of the pioneer countries mm-hmm. uh, to what this. about R&D from Israel research and development because research and development can they, jump start your defense industry I don't know if they will be positive about that I know that uh, okay. Israelis they are very tight yes they don't uh, share their no they can conduct r&d here yes on their behalf with an agreement that gets a percentage yeah. to cyprus yes maybe we need uh, new tanks okay. because of our um, in the, the decade uh, in the 90s uh, we were buying um, weapons from russia except from mm-hmm. france from russia so we have t80 uh, tanks that now they okay. have, they can, you know, they have a lack of. Uh, they will be sent in Ukraine, I presume. T eighties, or are they going to be kept? Or what about Leopards? I no, know that you, no, you no, have no. a. We we can send the T eighties to Serbia, like okay. the helicopters, mm-hmm. and take for uh, uh, exchange um, weapons from Serbia because Serbia is actually a producer nowadays yes. of, of military weaponry. Serbia is producing um, a very good and very reliable uh, weapons. You said about Leopard. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there was a plan from uh, European Union about Leopards. I don't know what, hap- what happened with that, but it will be more logical. It will uh, make more sense to have in the National Guard Leopards because Greece is the biggest uh, user of Leopards in the world. Uh, I'm saying that because we've read about uh, buying uh, Merkava tanks mm-hmm. from Israel, which are very good. Merkava 5, but uh, I think we were, we were we were going to buy 4 of something, yeah. Merkava 4. Anyway, I think Leopard will be will be a better choice because uh, Greece is using Leopard. Yeah. Um, so interoperability is there. Yes, and you can uh, have all the technical support from mm-hmm. Greece, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of uh, things to do. But mm-hmm. um, first of all, you have to have will and political will to do it. Of course. And. Uh, I'm not sure if there is. It's fascinating while you know while you're talking, especially now in defense, that I'm 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 talking to a person who does a lot of media and showbiz, and the the interest on the subject that you have put, you know, you're putting the dots together. Mm-hmm. So in a very simple way, you're giving option option one, option two, option three, option four, option five. But I want to go back to the strategic depth mm-hmm. uh, because you mentioned key points that for, uh, for anybody that is watching us at this point uh, would understand that these are military weapons, but again, you mentioned it yourself, that we need a strategic depth in order to uh, agree that we have a strategic plan, a military plan, a weapons plan, and we also have the challenges. I, I won't call it threat, I will call it challenges. You also mentioned at some point, you mentioned drones, so I want to go also on technology. Yes. Don't you think that since Cyprus may not be as, you know, as, as competitor, if you want, to a, to a peripheral power, such as Turkey, that it could combine efficiency in industry making and at the same time becoming a technology hub in defense as well, and why not also in the market, in health, in education, in infrastructure, highways, uh, smart buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Because you know, all this technology that is used in defense is also used in everyday life, in the things that we do. So maybe maybe Cyprus can become an exporter of this if only it creates, through its weapon buying, um, 
if you want a, a, a community creation within that creates an industry that is specific on these things which are not heavy weighted if you want that can challenge um mm -hmm. uh, a peripheral power which thinks that cyprus is a threat to them on an everyday basis no i think it's uh, utopia it? I, i would like to see greece to do that okay because now when you uh do the comparison between turkey's uh military um weapon manufacturer and the, the greek one uh, you you want to cry <laughs> Turkey is now building a second uh, air carrier. Is the is the Juan Carlos level of Avartia bigger? Mm -hmm. Bigger. Uh, I think it's a Chinese uh, mm -hmm. uh, design. Yes, yes. Um, they are. But the Juan Carlos is still not in the open seas. But you see, they have a vision. We don't have a vision. Mm -hmm. Greece and Cyprus. They um, they are planning. They but are the military balance seems to be the same. But we are concentrating on the industry. Yes. So the industry of Turkey exports weapons and sells weapons. Yes. We've seen their weapons being engaged, uh, including also drones, I've read UAVs as well. I've read yesterday that mm -hmm. Ukraine mm -hmm. want to uh, buy the fighter jet, Turkey's yeah, fighter Turkish jet, fighter jet, jet of, fifth, yeah. of fifth generation. Mm -hmm. So when you have uh, all this uh, uh, industry, it's yeah. most possible to win the war. Is is it a war of communication, of strategic communication? I mean, I'm going back to the to your own field of knowledge, but is it a war of strategic communication? Because the way that you anticipate is okay. We're not going to have a war between Greece and Turkey, but we do have a competition war. Who builds more, wins, in diplomacy, in politics, in trade, uh, because you're trading weapons, right? So you may not use them for your own sake of defense, but you're using for third parties or fourth parties. No. Look, my point of view is it's simple. In Greece, they say that we need 20 frigates. Mm -hmm. We have to have 20 frigates. Right. Even if Turkey has 50, right. our need is 20. We have to have right. 20 and modern and uh, technological advanced, advanced frigates, not 11, most of them uh, outdated. We have to have, um, for example, 250 50 fi fighter, uh, fighter jets, more fifth generation, fourth generation. So Let's we, have we it. have to do our own identification of the needs, basically. Yes, okay. and to have them, not to, um, uh, to lack of uh, right. frigates, lack of uh, that jets. Requires, that requires an industry, that requires... Uh, good engineering that requires the efficiency of having uh, sources that we can use and, in order to and vision mm -hmm. and program right because you see gr uh, turkey has vision plan mm -hmm. and program in uh, in greece is uh, for example you see i told you that i was reading a greek newspaper in the mid 80s i still remember the same stories i still didn't remember that the ministry of defense uh proposed to Andreas Papandreou when he was prime minister to buy 120 uh, um, F-18 or F-14 fighter jet uh, for the needs of the Greek um, Air for the Air Force, for the Hellenic Air Force. And uh, because of political reasons, uh, Papandreou said, no, we will buy 40 F-16 and 40 Mirage 2000. But this comes obviously from... Uh, recommendations. I mean, there is a. But the recommendation was 120 F. I don't remember exact 14 of F 18. I I think it was Hornet. Okay. So uh, and they will be uh, uh, co-produced in Greece also. Right. But they didn't do that. They did uh, the 40 and 40. F-16, F, uh, and the Mirage. And then Turkey came and uh, said, I will order 160 or 180 mm -hmm. F-16. Right. So th the buy of the century mm -hmm. was useless uh, suddenly. Right, right. We must have a vision and a plan for the national defense. While you were talking, I'm going to make it a lighter version now. Yes. Uh, as I said, it's it's a it's a part of yourself that I, I don't think that a lot of people may may be aware of, 
and um, you know I, I like the fact that you you you're spending a, a great deal of time you said years of reading and doing but I think it's also your 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 media opinion or your journalist opinion if I may say so um, considering the the vast discussions that I've been having but now let me let me make it on a you know on a lighter version since we're going towards the end of our of our series but allow me to say I mean in the weakest link for example has it ever been so that you might ask a question that relates with defense where you smile considering the knowledge of this and you're expecting an answer which is a total incomplete nonsense in that case? There were some questions. Um, I, I remember I asked about Rafal. Okay. I love Rafal. Okay. I love them. They are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. News for you, we got a <laughs> more more beautiful than F thirty uh, five. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, maybe you should say to the camera to the French that you like your phone more than the F sixteen from the American. Uh, no, F sixteen is a very very good airplane. Huh? It's uh, le- oh, you said F thirty five. Yes, I said F thirty five. Sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway, but we need F F thirty five also. What about the combination of both? Ah, uh, I think because this a, is where it goes. It's a very good strong and lethal combination uh, to keep mm-hmm. um, Greece and Aegean safe. Right. I, I don't know about Cyprus. Okay. <laughs> anyway. That includes Cyprus. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, but we need tankers. Okay. Anyway, I asked about Rafal, but they knew it. They okay. knew the answer because they are famous in mm-hmm. Greece. I think I asked about S-300 vessels, mm-hmm. and um, they answered that they... They are manufacturing in, in USA. I, I had some, but not so bizarre in order to remember it uh, vivid, uh, to remember it very vivid. But um, we know that in Greece, uh, Rafale, Mirage, F-16, they, they are famous brands right, right. Uh, for people because it's, um, there is a great discussion uh, in the media about these weapons. And... Um, I remember how uh, how impressed I was when I I've read how many tanks U, uh, UK and France have in comparison with Greece and Turkey. Mm-hmm. They have like uh, 400 in Greece. They have one uh, 1,800. Or um, how many fighter jets they have? Mm-hmm. What I, I wanted I want to say is that Greece has uh, much more weaponry w- yes that it requires and also for its because this, size this, is, this was i think the because the of level turkey. of yeah the level of turkey they buy we buy we buy they buy yes and that is a war that you know doesn't happen in the because of the military balance everything goes down what is worrying me now is the balance in the navy right and that uh, we are waiting for decisions and uh, let, 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 let me let me just make it a very uh, mellow mellow down on this one so what happens Yes. When you're on radio. Yes. On a morning show. Yes. And you read about those news because I'm pretty sure that you read the news while you talk on the radio because I can hear you out. So you might scroll and see a news like and you see on Navy. Yes. What is your comment that you make? Um, it depends. For example, when I saw the news about the new helicopters for National okay. Guard, okay. I said on the microphone, I think twice or three times, that I, 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 I don't agree with the with the decision because we sold the um, heavy Russian tanks we have in, mm-hmm. Ser- in the Serbian Air Force, and it was a good choice because mm-hmm. they can they can use it. Okay. They don't have the uh, the problem with Russia and um, and the sanctions, s- sanctions for sanctions. Russia, and um, we we are buying lighter helicopters from mm-hmm. Airbus from France, but. They cannot do the same work with the is helicopters there, is we there have. Is there a response? Is there somebody who respond, or may you may receive a message saying, why, "Why don't you agree? Why are you stating this?" Not much, but mainly people. Uh, I've noticed that people in Greece and in Cyprus they they think that uh, all this spending is in vain. Right. I disagree. Mm-hmm. That is in vain, and we don't have to. Uh, spend so many, so much money and so uh, many billions for uh, uh, weapons uh, because, or either 
nothing will happen mm -hmm. or uh, even if something happens it won't change anything right right and uh, this is very um, uh, this is wrong for me it's a mistake dear tassos it was a pleasure having you at, at our I hope web so. series <laughs> Um, this is, I think, at least from the years I've been watching you on TV and radio, and I thank you again for being here today. Um, I haven't noticed this part of yourself, which I, I think it was a, it was a lovely discussion. Who because, told you? Well, I can, I can <laughs> tell you, I can tell you, but we know him, uh, both, we, we both but know him. Let's play a game before. Okay, sure. You are a decision maker, okay? okay. You are the decision maker. Okay. Which frigate you'll uh, choose for uh, Greek uh, Navy? I will say mine, you will say yours. That's a good question. I mean, the Bellara are very good ones. I prefer Frem. Bellara are frame. small. Yeah, well, yeah. Frem. But, but that was, you know, very I good. I prefer Frem. So we agree. Tank? Leopard. 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 I like I like the leopards because I've seen them in action. Yes, I believe and, leopard. Uh, is the action. I mean, if you go to the area of Alexandria, which is a rough mm -hmm. area, and if you go to Odessa, then you see the leopards how they are there. And they make sense um, because they're strong, they're fast, and uh, they have a good caliber of, of, of pointing in. And I, if it wouldn't be successful, then they wouldn't sell the amount of, that they sell to the countries that they sell. Yes, fighter jet. Fighter jets. I would do a mixture. Between you know what? I, I would go for the F twenty two Raptors. They don't sell it. They don't sell it. I them. know. That's why I would <laughs> I would uh, want to push for this because uh, the F twenty two is a huge uh, success if somebody gets it. Rafal. Um, Rafal, amazing, amazing one uh, for multiple technical elements. Uh, the F thirty five is a strategic choice. Yes, I, uh, so I agree for, for 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 these reasons. But a combination can be more lethal. Uh, considering the geographical location and the necessity to be on the corner edge of Greece and Cyprus in no time. And I think the time is of essence because the amount of, of the fighter planes that we have and the fighter pilots that we have showcases that whatever airplane you give them, they will deliver the results that you want. So the, the big question is the extent of the radar, the defense against a possible cyber attack, and the weapons that you carry and the depth of fight that you can go to the extent with, which the majority is done either by, by Rafal or F-16, fourth generation onwards, and definitely the, um, you know, the F-35s. Yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, so let's hope. <laughs> that it was, it, it, it's very funny how, how he turned around the, the, the discussion into into another interview. But I, I think that that's exactly what you, you what you're good at. And um, I thank you again uh, for being uh, here with us together. And I do hope that we see you again. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, from now on, whenever I'm going to be listening to you on radio, I'm going to be thinking <laughs> the fact that you have, you know, the other the other part of Tassos that knows exactly what he's talking and about. And you can call me and discuss the the news, absolutely the current affairs, whenever in, you want in the defense uh, area. I would be delighted to. Thank you very much, Tassos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for watching another web series of Strategy International. Please like, follow, share, and subscribe on our social media. My name is Dr. Mario Seftimiopoulos, and I'm the CEO of Strategy International, and this was Prime Analysis. And remember, impact makes a difference.